I've got a lot of breaking news for you. Uh, most of it from that deadly UK terror attack. U.S. officials are now confirming to Fox News that the Manchester bomber, 22 year old Salman Abidi, spent three weeks in Libya and returned to the U United Kingdom just days prior to the attack that has killed 22, injured 159 people, including young children. This unfolds as police arrest now count seven, seven suspects uh, that have been involved in, quote, a terror network and all connected to this attack, including the bomber's father and two brothers who reportedly have links to terror groups. Here to discuss former Navy SEAL and author of The Operator, Rob O'Neill joins us now. Rob, uh, these arrests are coming fast and furiously, but people are going to be furious when they find out how extensive this network was, that uh, apparently Abidi uh, not only traveled more recently uh, to the Middle East, but he was there in 2011, according to a story that's just broken with the Wall Street Journal. As a teenager, he joined a militia with his father, then apparently or ostensibly to oust uh, Muammar Gaddafi. Yes, in 2011, they were trying to get uh, Gaddafi out of power, who had been a dictator for a long, long time, and something that they were calling, not, it was not the awakening, that was in Iraq, but they were doing the Arab Spring, which started in Tunisia, which is a neighboring com country of uh, Libya. It started off as getting him out, but then once the power vacuum, like we've seen happen in Iraq and in Syria, the militants moved in, and a lot of these people found themselves on one side or the other, and ISIS came in, Al Qaeda came in, who are all loosely the same ideology, the Wahhabism from Saudi Arabia. And yes, they, they did go back and forth to, um, to the UK, to Manchester, which you know, you're hearing about these lone wolves and stuff like that. That's right. something that we should stop saying. There's right. not a lone wolf. All these, everything from Brussels to San Bernardino, these are related to one certain kind of Wahhabism, this radical Sunni Islam. And what's frustrating, though, is his father seems like, seems like, you know, he raised them as Muslims, had them praying five times a day. He would do the call to prayer himself. He was, as far as he, we know, he was against ISIS to the point where he even took his son's passport away from him, from him gave him his passport back once he, the son lied to him and said he was going to go to Mecca. So there are things like that. But that's what we need to happen right there is where some, someone seems radical to the point where you don't want him to travel. You need to report them to someone because this guy ends up either being a bomb maker and a suicide right. bomber or just a suicide bomber, which is bad enough. But, but apparently someone, perhaps his mother or someone close to him, did tell people that he was changing more recently. Uh, and I, I, it feels like those sort of warnings more and more fall on deaf ears, despite the fact that these terror events happen more frequently and the occurrences are more frequent. But, but how do we, so how are we going to deal with this? Because you've got a lot of issues here. First of all, uh, regime change. Uh, you know, our country, I think, uh, said we want to get out of that business, even though there's a lot of pressure on us right now, even with the Trump administration uh, attacking Assad uh, more recently. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to perhaps change the regime there, but certainly we're sending a message. Where do we fall with respect to trying to control this? Uh, because it's, 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 it's got a lot of tentacles. I think it started off the right way with President Trump going to Riyadh first, to Saudi Arabia, and talking with 50 leaders from Muslim nations. Not necessarily Arab nations, but Muslim nations. And having them, th that right there shows it's not a, a ban on Muslims. It's just that kind of we're all in this together, and we need to be screening people from different spots. But let me ask you, because so, you brought up Wahhabism. I think that was started in the 1700s, and essentially says that uh, the, the origins of Muslims, super Supersede anything, a country's constitution. Uh, Everything, any, yeah, that's, they, they believe in the, the living at the time, like Muhammad did at the time of Muhammad. And that Sharia law is above anything. And you see it happening now with a lot of these migrants that they go in. Even some people here, they'll, when they say, did the constitution come first or Sharia law, they very plainly will say, just Sharia law obviously supersedes. And that's something that um, we got to decide what we believe. I mean, we have a freedom of religion, which is fine. The constitution comes first, regardless of your religion, as far, sure. as, as, far as I think, sure. as far as it should be. Uh, and it may, and it makes sense to me, but yes, they, they want to they go back in time. Every religion has its bad moments in history, but I think a lot of them have grown. Um, and I'm hoping that Islam is growing, and, and, and most Muslims want to be peaceful. But this brand, Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, ISIS, Khorasan, um, all those people, they want to go back in time, back in time. Instead of, instead of progressing, they want to regress to what they, you know, uh, throwing uh, homosexuals off of mountains or buildings, sure. cutting off hands of thieves, um, killing women, stoning to death for adultery. Rob, before I let you go, uh, a lot of great headlines, at least I think so, in the last 24 hours. U.S.-led coalition increased their airstrikes by 50% against the Islamic State. U.S. Special Forces raid al-Qaeda compound in central Yemen. Uh, are, are you happy with the, uh, the fact now that President Trump is allowing 
our generals and yes. special forces to win, to fight to Ab win. Absolutely. We're, uh, I talked to my friends. I've talked to a few of them today. They're happy they're going there with a mission. They have leadership. They know what they're doing. These strikes in the Horn of Africa, these strikes in the Arabian Peninsula, um, these are really, really good. They're hitting. They did a strike to develop target just recently. Uh, my former SEAL team was in there. They did kill some, some, some of the militants. They're trying to find more targets, uh, more intelligence to get to high value targets. Everything from uh, even uh, Secretary Mattis getting involved with the budget. We need more money for this. This specific reason needs this much hellfires. We need more uh, 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 joint direct action munitions, things like that. I'm very happy with the delegation that's happening right now. Uh, the combatant commanders are being allowed to do it, and the, the, the reaction is quicker when they ask for targeting. Mad Dog Matt is very specific. 7,500 more hellfire missiles, 34,000 more attack munitions, 6,000 more guided missiles, 7,300 more uh, dime, diameter bombs. To your point, he wants that <laughs> ammo. He wants to go after the bad and guys. He, and President Trump right. has said, go get them. Yes, Bravo, Neil. Thanks, Joe. Everybody, Thanks, Joe. the book is the operator. Thank you very much, buddy.